now, finally, I think it's time to open our event. And uh, for this, I would like to welcome Professor Lydia Kaiser. Lydia is head of the Department of Digital Engineering 4.0 of the Technical University of Berlin and the Einstein Center Digital Future. Julia teaches and also researches in the field of systems engineering with a focus on the design of the product development. Julia has been appointed to the General Council of the German Federal Ministry of Defense in May 2021. Julia has studied physics at the Paderborn University and received her PhD in 2013 in the field of model-based systems engineering under the supervision of Professor Jürgen Gausemeyer. And before that, she's been research associate for three years at the Chair of Product Engineering at the Nixford, uh, Heinz Nixford Institute of Paderborn University. Um, she has changed to the Fraunhofer Institute of Mechatronic Systems Design in Paderborn in 2012. Um, and she's been working uh, in the department of Professor Roman Domitrescu, who is also chairing the AI marketplace. Um, and uh, um, she's been the leader of uh, um, the division systems engineering between 2018 and 2021. So, Julia, can AI make model based systems engineering smarter? This is the question we're looking <laughs> forward. Um, to you. Um, please take over the screen sharing and uh, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much, Anna, for the uh, for the introduction. Can you see my slides uh, on the right way? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And uh, yes, I will present some results I did at my time at the Fraunhofer Institute. And we did on, uh, we go on with this uh, research um, at the time I am at in Berlin, but I would like to present the whole, um, the whole uh, aspect. So yes, my question is, can AI make MBSE smarter? And first of that, in my presentation, I would like to, to introduce a little bit more what is systems engineering and, of course, what is model-based systems engineering and why I think that we have some challenges right now um, but in this modeling aspect we can handle with um, maybe this technology like um, artificial intelligence. So let's take a look. First of all, we are Julia, just one question, just in case you are already in the presentation mode. We are not seeing yes, your slide in presentation mode. Is it better? We do see your slide, but not in presentation mode. Okay. So now it might then be, but you can move ahead like this. I, I, I know, I know. No, 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 no. We can change. I think. I know why. So, okay. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay. Then let's start. Um, yeah, we are living in the digital age. Um, we have all these technologies like digital twin, artificial intelligence, or automatization, and all of that has rise up and get a very high technology readiness level. So this that this technology is not only uh, in research and science, um, and we can think about how to use it. It is already in our daily life. This product, so it changed uh, the way we have we um, develop products and we use the product, and also it's changed the way how we interact also with each other. So let's take a look at some examples. So we have like the Siri or Alexa, uh, this, those systems that are um, understanding what I want to ask, what I want to uh, hear, and they uh, can give me the right answer that use the knowledge out of the internet of the whole, um, of the uh, many, many people. So this is one example we use in a daily life. Another example that goes more into the robotics and here we see that we find new solutions um, that can work uh, with us or for us people and work in those fields where we have a shortage of people in this uh, working in this area. This is made all possible because we have all this technology already. And um, on the other side, we have also 
uh, very, very um, high, high um, use of AI, for example, in writing texts. And here we see that uh, it somehow can be generated automatically, or we can generate uh, from text to picture. And this is all possible because the technology is so far. And we can describe new products and we can uh, use all this technology to interact with our systems or with each other. And when we took, take a look how we develop those systems, we see that there's also the change that came uh, in the 70s, 80s. Like we started with a um, technical drawing on paper, then we had the opportunity to do that in the computer by computer aided design. And the change was that it's not only possible to, do, to draw it in the 2D, it was possible to do that, the whole modeling process 3D. And we see that there is a change um, in how we develop those systems, how we can describe, for example, the shape. But it's not only the shape, it's also that we can describe more and more all the functionality of the product, the behavior uh, on a very different aspect. And the next step will be that we also use other technology like um, augmented reality and virtual reality so that we use all this information and all this um, described aspects of the product to help during the whole uh, development process to help the engineers to understand, to visualize the aspects and to interact also with a, a product that is uh, still on a virtual way and not um, real life. So you see on that case, we use this technologies already in our systems. We create new systems that are intelligent, they are interactive um, with this, the person and they're interconnected with each other. And we have an impact to the way how we develop those systems. And that's why we need new ways how we do uh, this whole process and how we handle all this process because all this um, is not only done by one discipline, we need many, many people that are involved and have to handle the complexity of the system and the whole development process. And here we see that systems engineering is one of the main aspects we need uh, for that. And systems engineering is not new, it has um, a high impact to the aerospace industry and where we had the whole the huge complexity and we always had many, many people that were uh, involved in this developing, developing process, but also to realize missions. And uh, we have this in International Council on Systems Engineering, the, uh, a council that is def defines what systems engineering is and brings out handbooks to make it possible for other industry sectors to use also this approach. And this council says it's systems engineering is a transdisciplinary and integrative approach to enable the realization use retirement of engineered systems. It means that we have all the systems that can be techno technological systems of, or digital, or they can also social technical systems that we have to realize by a holistic way of thinking, of um, thinking not only the use of the system, but also the whole product life cycle. And uh, if you are interested more in this, you can uh, go onto the uh, webpage, uh, the Incosi webpage, uh, where they described um, everything also in, in the vision. 2035, where they say, what is systems engineering? What is the status today and where we are going uh, in the future? And we see that systems engineering came from aerospace. Nowadays, we have other industry sectors talking about systems engineering and, and looking how to integrate uh, this, those aspects into the, the whole company. For, for that, we have a high, um, um, we see that automotive is uh, a very far away um, on that or ongoing and other industries like plant and engineering uh, industries, they are started, but they have other issues. They have other, um, um, they need other scalable uh, methods and tools to, to use that. So 
when we start with systems engineering, we have to org reorganize our, our companies because we have other roles that uh, have to uh, talk, uh, work together and um, we have um, we have to break break the silos but at the end we are still possible still possible to work uh, on a systems engineering way but still be document oriented so this uh, this you see here for example we have many people that are involved in this process and all of them um, describe the system and uh, describe their point of view to the system on their own way and use documents to share all this information and you have um, yeah a new complexity and uh, have new problems to overcome and the idea is now is not only to do that um, on a um, yeah, systems engineering way but do this on a model based way and for that the idea is to build up a system model a system model that is described in a very early design phase where we just have the requirements um, where we uh, start to think of the whole system breaking down into subsystems in this um, architecture and then describe the behavior and all this uh, different aspects of the system are described in the model and all these aspects are connected with each other so that we have traces and if for example a requirement change we have uh, we can see what impact will it have to the whole system and where uh, we have to change and the idea is not only to have the system model um, and um, build up for example from one person it's more that we have many people that are involved in describing the system model and also interact um, with um, with this model by using information or giving new information into this model. So it's the idea of uh, having one single source of truth. And when to build up such a system model, it's necessary to understand that we need three aspects. And the one is we need a modeling tool. We need, of course, a tool where we can describe this aspect, entities, and um, uh, connect them. But um, and make it so easy to to use and also to make it um, more formalized that the computer can understand what we are doing. But on the other uh, part, we need a modeling language. That means we need somehow a definition how we use this, uh, how we describe the system, in what kind of way, what is the syntax and semantic. And the third aspect is the method. The method that guides you through uh, developing this system model and how to use it. And I have, I uh, bring here some examples. It's not uh, completely complete, but it's just to show that there are many, many ways how to do that. And uh, there are um, some aspects, uh, some tools that were developed using a special, um, special modeling language like the standardized systems modeling language as this um, but don't use somehow a method um, it, they are free what which method to use or we have we find somehow methods that use an own modeling language or can be changed and use other languages um, or sometimes we find uh, methods like the Arcadia that uh, developed an own tool that is only for the most um, uh, most supporting the method. So this is Capella. And the main uh, goal is in the beginning of starting this systems modeling aspect is to understand that you have to find the right combination of all three of them that fits the best together and they fulfill your own purpose. And this is somehow a little bit difficult. And um, as I said, we have different industry sectors. They have uh, maybe a different, um, different purpose and a different way how, what people are working with the system model and uh, how many people have to be integrated. And so that makes a little bit um, not that easy to use it um in the way we think it should be used now we have 
the problem that all the companies have, or well, many companies, understand we need systems engineering, we need modern-based systems engineering, but there are still many challenges. The one, as I said, to find the right combination and the right way how to use it. Um, and, and the other are, for example, that we see that we have a high learning effort and training needs for the people that are involved in training uh, mm -hmm. the, the methods, the language, and the tools. And on the other hand, we have a high complexity. So the main goal is we want to handle complexity of the systems, but at the end, we build up a complex model, a model where we have many entities and many relationships, and all that has to be described and then handled over time. So that means we have still a high manual effort um, in modeling aspects to bring all this information into this model, but also when we have this model to maintain this over the time. And that brings us to two main effects. We see that the, on the one side, we have a re reusability of this model. So the people that are building up this model at the beginning, they have a huge impact on their development process or the conceptual phase, but at the end, they don't use it maybe over the whole development process uh, or don't use it for the next project. So that we have somehow um, people say, we have some zombie models uh, that are built up. And the second effect, we see that we have a low acceptance uh, among all the employees that are involved. It's because of the complexity, as I, I um, mentioned before, but also that we see that we have somehow isolated solutions um, and it's not the main aspect, like we said, um, we want to build up a single source of truth. And we have, so we have somehow problems to bring modern-based systems engineering into the right uh, use. So, and some voices are comparing this effect like uh, we had in the 70s, 80s when computer added design came up. But I think this comparison is somehow similar, but we have the difference that, that computer edit design uh, is only affecting a, a small part of people. Uh, Modern-based systems engineering address many, many people. It's the one aspect. And the other is that uh, we live in the Julia, I think you are on mute accidentally. I'm sorry, I don't know how it's happened. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes thank you. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure where I uh, stopped. But I think I, I start with a comparison with uh, the introduction of computer aided design in the 70s, 80s. Uh, we we see that it's similar because we um, um, yeah we have this change process, but at the end we have only a um, small part of people that were involved in this in the computer aided design. Now we have many people um, that are part of the development process and need to understand and use MBSE. And um, on the other hand, we live in a time where we have so uh, where we use and see all this technology in our daily life products, and we still use in this um, uh, in this area technology that came from the 90s. Um, and so I think that we can change that. And this is what we did at the Fraunhofer Institute, where we looked up and um, thought about how can we support all these processes by uh, using AI-based assistances. And for that, we find out that we have two areas. The one is we can support the modeling process itself. That means all those aspects that rise up because we are modeling, we, we um, build up a model. And on the other hand, we can support the content. That means um, to understand the content, the, the product that is developed, and then help uh, support this process. 
Here are some examples what we think that we can support. For example, uh, take over repetitive uh, tasks or uh, help to handle the, the, um, handle the modeling, uh, handle the model itself. As I said, there are many, many entities. Or for example, to understand how, which user is interacting with this model, which user um, is doing what and, and on what kind of way, and maybe support it in uh, the user-centric way. And on the content uh, side, we see that we could support also in finding solutions or reuse of um, knowledge solutions that we have over time um, because we are in a field of, for example, automotive or um, in the field of uh, common industry. And how it could look like, I would like to present you on some examples we real realized with students. Um, we did that on our own method, and so that I would like to introduce a little bit more uh, this method so you can understand how we worked on that. The method is one of uh, many methods. It's uh, developed in Paderborn and we use it in many, many projects. So this is, the idea is to build up a system model by describing first the environment of the system, so looking at the boundaries of the system, then uh, uh, describing the application scenarios, the requirements of the system. After that, looking at the functionality and the active structure, like the uh, architecture of the system and the behavior. And this methods we used a lot uh, in this project. Uh, different industry sectors, we had different development tasks and we used it in the, that way that we did many, many workshops where we had a uh, different person involved in the development process and different roles. We had mechanical engineers, electrical software engineers, or people from the sale or from the service. And they um, had to describe their system and uh, we used our method so that they had at the end uh, good communication and could collaborate over the disciplines. And at the end, the effect was that they had a common understanding of the whole system of interest. And we did that in workshops because it was easier to handle that. And uh, we wanted to, to um, not someone sitting at the computer and modeling, we wanted to bring them into the discussion and help them to communicate. And what, this was the one aspect where I said, I would like to use this way um, of modeling and try how can we use AI to support that. And I would like to explain three examples we are realized. The one is the MBSE workshop assistant. So as I said, we wanted to make this workshop character alive and help um, and use maybe multi-touch displays so that the people still are in um, a communication, interaction uh, way, and they describe the system on, on an easy way that they just draw some shapes. And we have the sh shape detection um, so that it's formalized in, in the back end. And then we can use handwriting recognition that the people can write this, uh, what the system elements, for example, are, or we have the speech recognition so that it's um, also generated automatically. Here you see how it is realized, but I don't want to go into deep um, into that. Uh, you will have this video after that. You can stop and look into. Um, I would like to present you the next two one. So the second is to use all these models we have as a knowledge base. And uh, we did that with the, we think when, if, if uh, the industry use model-based systems engineering over time and they describe all the projects, they build up a very huge knowledge uh, of those products and the elements and all this information we have in the system model. We want to reuse that and we realize that with a knowledge graph. 
So we have all this information about uh, entities and their relationships, and we have some kind of ranking. So that means if we are going in the next project and want to describe the system, then we have a recommendation, what is the element, or maybe what are the um, requirements to this element, uh, what are maybe for, um, past failures we had with those elements and so on. And we did that uh, with a systems modeler, or we did that uh, in combination with this workshop modeler I told you before. And the third one is, um, somehow like Siri or Alexa for the engineers. Um, and we said, we have so many information in the internet about the systems engineering um, processes and, um, yeah, and somehow also technology um, aspect. So we want to um, use a virtual assistant that we can ask questions and then it answers, for example, um, we say, what is the next step? Um, I described uh, the requirements, what, uh, how to describe the functionality of the system. Or combining it with the knowledge graph, we can ask uh, this virtual assistant also aspects about the systems itself. So we can say, ask which um, uh, elements does fulfill this requirement and then get the answer. So I hope you have, um, you see somehow how it can change um, and let me sum it up. So I think we need in, uh, to, to just develop all the products, all the um, new solutions uh, using all the technology. We need systems engineering and we, it will be model based. So we see that adopting MBSE in industry is compared with uh, computer edit design in the 70s, 80s, but I'm sure we can use AI-based assistant functions to reduce the effort to make it very smart to, um, to handle it and to use it for many, many people. And the next work we will do is, I think we have to rethink the way of how we model. So to think about what is the purpose and how to realize it with new functionality using all this technology. So we would like to find other use cases and pilot them um, and to, to understand how to work with it. And uh, with all of that, I'm sure we can make MBSE smarter. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.